Pot of Coffee Knits. This is my new podcast. I'm Stacy from Pot of Coffee Knits. You can find me on Etsy and Facebook and Instagram, all at Pot of Coffee Knits. Pretty simple. Well, this is my new podcast. It's going to be about all the things that I love to do. Um, I love reading and books, knitting, yarns, nature, photography, writing, painting. Um, there's just a lot of things I love to do. I homeschool my four kids and I work full time from home also. But the thing that I really love to do is to create. So this podcast is going to incorporate kind of everything. Um, sometimes you might see me talking about my garden or um, my urban homestead or knitting or yarn or my Etsy shop or things that we do homeschooling. There's just a lot of things that this is going to kind of incorporate. So my goal of my podcast was to get things out there that I love to talk about and hopefully network with other people who have some of the same interests as me. So welcome. All right, well, let's get started. So the first thing I want to tell you is that I um, will be opening my Etsy shop on April 1st. So I'm really excited about this. This is a new venture. It will showcase things that I love to make. And I'm hoping that, um, that you'll find some things there that might you might enjoy. Um, I just started recently in the last few months dabbling in hand dyeing yarn and I know that there's a large chunk of people out there that do that and so I'm trying to make my mark in this industry but I love knitting I'm obsessed with knitting actually a little bit um, if you ask my husband but dyeing yarn was something I really wanted to try and I actually started out um, with the acid dyes and I started dyeing just some mini skeins to test out some skills and some colorways. And, um, and then I started dabbling in natural dyes, which I actually have found, even though you can make a variety of colors with acid dyes and you can do a lot of speckles and fun things like that with it, I actually found that I love natural dyes. I absolutely love dyeing from things in nature. See, I'm a little obsessed with nature. I love hiking, I love being outside, camping, fishing, um, foraging, gardening, all those things. I, I pretty, I love everything that has to do with nature. I love poetry about nature. I love photography, nature photography, all those things. So one of the things that really intrigued me about natural dye was that you can forage for things in nature and make your own dyes and then dye things with them. And I thought that the process of that is so much slower paced um, and you have to be very mindful of what you're doing. And I really like that about that. Um, it takes a little longer, but the colors, you never really quite know what you're gonna get. And so I think that that is really cool too. So the first natural dye that I did was actually with um, avocado dyes. And they're so easy to do, it's incredible. Uh, you would think, you'd be surprised about the color that you get with an avocado dye. But I made some, use the skins, my family eats a lot of avocados, so I figured I'd start there. So I used the skins and the, the pits, and I made a dye bath, and it came out with this incredible um, peachy pink kind of tan color. And I, I, I might actually be one of my absolute new favorite colors. So I have actually made six, six yarns in this avocado dye. Um, a friend of mine bought three of them from me. And then I have one of these in a fingering weight, um, which is a 75% merino and 25% nylon base. And then I have one in 100% um, wool, Peruvian wool, that is a DK weight. And then I have one that is actually from a local shepherdess here in town, um, near town. And she has her own little goat and sheep dairy and it's one of the best places they've been to. And 
um, just last year, she used to sell the fleece from her sheep, just sell it off. And just last year, she actually decided she wanted to get her fleece spun into wool. And so she has this really great wool that has a high twist to it. And so I talked to her about getting some of her wool. And so she gave me a sample skein and it turned out beautiful. So I, that one's, um, that one I'm keeping right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna get some more wool from her and dye up some more wool, but I feel like because hers is so natural, it's minimally processed, there's still um, some particles in there, grass and things like that, that I, I actually love because it makes it even more natural. So all of the yarn I get from her will be naturally dyed because I think it deserves the natural dye treatment. Um, but, so let me show you what I'm going to have in my shop to start off with. And I don't have a lot of yarn to start off with, but um, there'll be, I think there's three skeins of each of these in the shop. So it'll be a good start. Just inspire me to do a little bit more. So the first one that I actually dyed on my sample mini skeins um, was inspired by Willy Wonka, the movie. The old one, it's the better one. Um, that one, I really, I actually had a dream about the color scheme that I wanted to do for my first yarn. And so on my mini skeins that I made, I was like, I woke up and I had dreamed about Willy Wonka colors, purple for his coat and hat and his suit, then brown, like a chestnut brown for the chocolate, and then a goldish color for the golden tickets. And I was really excited and so I decided to dye that up, and this is how it turned out. I'm not sure how well you can see that. It turned out better than I expected. You see, you get like the purples, the nice chestnut coloring through here, these gold colors, lots of speckles, lots of blending, and it turned out so pretty, and I'm super excited about it. So this one, this one will end up being a staple for a while in my Etsy shop, I know. And it's so soft. All of the yarns I'm gonna show you right now are actually the 75-25, 75% merino, 25% nylon, fingering um, yarns, soft yarns, but can be used for anything. So that's my first one, Wonka Vision, okay? So then the next one that I decided to dye up was because I love nature. Most of my yarns are gonna be, colorways are gonna be nature themed inspired. And so my son, one of my sons, he knows how much I love monarch butterflies. Every fall we get monarchs all around our house. So every fall we go and we find some monarch caterpillars and we usually keep a couple of them in a jar and for homeschool we do it as a science project but also just because it's fun we will keep the caterpillar in there until it turns into a butterfly and then we release it so we love monarch butterflies around here and so he said mom you should make one that looks like a monarch butterfly like black and orange and white speckles so I thought that was a good idea and so I made it and it way exceeded my expectations. And anyone who dies with yarn kind of knows that black is a little hard to work with. Um, I've found because when you rinse it, it tends to bleed a little bit. So sometimes you get like a nice gray color, but these ones turned out so far, I have three of them, but I'm a little concerned that they're gonna be difficult to remake because of the black in there. So I'm gonna have to try my hand at it and see what happens. But this is how my Monarch turned out. It far exceeded my expectations. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait for someone to buy this and knit it up because I really wanna see what it looks like knitted up. But it has some great speckling throughout here. You've got your orange and your black and your white to represent the monarch butterfly. And I just think it turned out beautiful and I am super excited about it. So that's that one. Okay. So
So then I really liked those colors together. And so then I wanted to kind of practice or try my hand at making it a little bit darker because I wanted to have like a gray background, <clears throat> a gray base. And so I went ahead and I used a little more black and I made one with the same colors, but darker. And it's hard to see with the light right there, there you go. So it has a lot more black in it. The orange is more muted and then the undertone because of the black bleeding is more of a gray color. Look how pretty that is. And this one reminded me of um, a stormy summer night as the sun's setting. And I live in the Midwest. I live in Nebraska. And so we had a lot of summer storms and tornadoes and things like that. And the sky can get really, really black. But it's always so pretty when the sun is setting and it storms to you get these colors. You get these oranges and pinks and things that, and then the dark kind of terrible looking sky, which I still think is pretty because I love storms. But so this is stormy sunset and it's close to the Monarch, but you can see Monarch is a lot lighter. The stormy sunset has a grayer base and is a little darker. But so this is Monarch and this is stormy sunset. So those will be in my shop. And then I also, um, I am very into organic and natural eating and eating with the seasons. Um, we, we love plant-based foods. We're not vegetarians or vegans or anything, but we, um, we love to eat with the seasons and have our bodies be fueled the way that God intended. And that's why he provides things at certain seasons. And, um, and so we, that's another thing that you'll find on my podcast is I'll be talking a lot about cooking too, because I love cooking and, um, and eating healthy and using herbs and such for natural homemade remedies and natural eating and those types of things, but off topic. So my oldest son, he's about to be 14. Um, he actually said, mom, remember how much you love dandelions? Not a lot of people love dandelions, but I, I love dandelions. I think they're pretty and they serve a great purpose. Um, they're purifying and they detoxify your liver in the spring. And that's why they're so abundant in the spring. They're really good for you. And so I said, that's a great idea. See, I get a lot of inspiration from my kids. I have four of them, by the way. So my, I have three sons and one daughter. And my boys are almost 14, 12, just turned 10, and then my daughter just turned eight. So they're getting older now. But So this one is called Dandelion. It's got your bright greens like a dandelion has, some white, and then a really pretty bright yellow. And I think it would be really fun for a spring shawl or socks or just anything fun. It's bright, it's happy. <laughs> I love yellow because it's in green because they're happy colors. But this one I think would be great for something springy. Um, so it goes along with my spring opening of my shop. But So this one is dandelion. And then the last one that will be in my shop this current as I start actually might have turned out to be one of my favorites. Um, it was one of those that I had an idea in my head and you have to really know colors when you're dyeing yarn because, you know, colors bleed, they change colors. But I expected a little bit of um, color changing, but not as much as it got, but I'm happy that it did. So this one is called Awakening. And it might actually be my current favorite besides my Monarch one. Um, look at those great speckles in there. It turned out really good. So I actually dyed this yarn with a blue and this um, golden ochre yellow. And because blue and yellow make green, even though they were pretty well separated, it came out with these great, beautiful greens, spring greens in there. I mean, 
Like, I couldn't have even dyed those greens, I don't think. They turned out so good. It was the perfect green combination. So I named this Awakening because of the blues and the yellows and the greens. It reminds me of spring, kind of waking up after winter. It's very springy. I think this would make a beautiful shawl. I, I really do. So there's three of each of these um, colorways in the shop that's going to be opening on April 1st. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about these and I hope that you like the colors too. I know there's a lot of yarn dyers, like I said, out there. So it's kind of, you know, you pick colors that you want to work with. But um, So those are my first attempts at dyeing and I'm pretty excited about how they turned out. I think they turned out pretty good. Anyways, so that's really what I wanted to start off today is kind of introduce myself, um, introduce some of the yarns that are going to be in the shop, and um, talk a little bit about why I started doing this. Um, I, I really wanted to make some creative color palettes and just try my hand at something different because I sew and I knit and I embroider and I paint and I do photography and um, that's actually a picture I took of some juniper berries and um, photographs like that will be in my Etsy shop also but I really wanted to try my hand at dyeing yarn which would give me a whole other outlet of colors and try something different and I want to be able to do things that I enjoy doing and so that's that's where the inspiration for the Etsy shop came and I love following other yarn dyers on Instagram and um, one of the first podcasts I ever watched was actually Tiffany from a woolen homestead um, and she I watched her podcasts from the beginning and I love how she I got to watch her um, start her business her Etsy business and her yarn dyeing and I have bought a lot of yarn from her so um, so her her podcast actually inspired me to just jump in and start dying and to also start my own podcast. I'm hoping though, as I move forward, and I really, really want to get more into natural dye. So I, like I said, I just, I love the process and how it's slow, it's mindful, it takes a lot of, a lot of time to create something and then Sometimes, you know, nature can surprise you about what's, what colors it's going to come up with. So I'm hoping that in the future you'll be seeing some videos of me doing some dyeing and some um, natural dyes. And for this podcast, I'm just sitting here talking to you, but a lot of my podcasts I'm hoping to take you along with me out into the garden and show you some of the things we're growing and take you in the kitchen and show you some of the things we're cooking and show you my bookshelf and a lot of books I have because I'm a little book obsessed too. But thank you for joining in today. Um, future podcasts will probably have a little more information, but like I said, I just wanted to do an introduction and say hi to everybody and kind of kick this off and see how it goes. But uh, leave me your feedback. Um, like, comment, share, and you can find me again on Instagram, on Ravelry, on Facebook, and on Etsy at Pot of Coffee Knits. So, thanks.